Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. How are you doing tonight? I tell you, it is like clockwork. What happens is about three minutes before I go live, some tech thing goes wrong. So in this case, it was my iPad with my speaking notes decided to go, you don't have permission to show that slideshow. So we're going to go. We're going to go with it. Um, anyway, I've got I've got some alternate notes. So um, I think I'll be okay. Um, but welcome everybody. I'm really glad you decided to make it here tonight. This is a nighttime. This is probably my first nighttime uh, live, I think. And so I decided to go live to um, to uh, see experiment a little bit with time zone and see if some more people could make it in an evening time slot than during a day time slot. And so, um, hey, Peter, hey, Daniel, um, Brooke, Animal Hospital Statesville, Jan is here. Lots of my peeps are here. Um, the lovely and talented uh, Joselle Tech is uh, is moderating, and I've got to close my, uh, Joselle, you're, are you set as a moderator? I gotta double check this. Yes, she is, okay, good. Now I'm gonna close this. And um, all right, so welcome you guys. Um, Trench, good to see you, Steph. Steph is here, awesome. Tammy is here. Um, so what we're gonna do tonight is we are gonna, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm very much of an introvert. I run my business on Zoom. I have, you know, a very kind of self-contained office, one person office walkable from my house. You know, it's a it's an entrepreneurial uh, life, right? And I do all my business on Zoom. But I tell you, COVID is starting to wear on me. I don't know about you guys. Anyone else in the in the comments? Hey, Mariana, how are you? Um, Carrie, good to see you. Luis, um, Allison, yeah. I you know I have I have good days where I'm like so so totally pumped and like ready to go and take on the world and give me another cup of coffee and then. I don't know whether it's allergies or something, but the last couple of days have been like a slog. They've been really hard. So, um, you know, I just, I like to come on and speak my truth, you know, be transparent because we're all human. And, you know, I'm going to talk about superpowers today. And uh, it's a little bit more of a general conversation today. But uh, I wanted to talk about superpowers because... Um, I feel like all of us, to a certain extent, are having to draw on superpowers right now in order just to um, to get by, right? To work our work, you know, if we don't have work, to find some work or to do something in place of work to keep ourselves smart and engaged and uh, and not completely disconnected from like society, right? Hey, Elaine, uh, Trisha, Savvy, Brooke, good to see you guys. Um, and so, you know, what I want to share about tonight is just a little bit more of a, a broad stroke, brush stroke of what we do as creative professionals and entrepreneurs and the kind of skill sets that we need to do that and um, how it's somewhat different than it's been. And certainly because of the current environment um, with what it's done to people's livelihoods, what it's done to the economy, what that could be happening, you know, very long term. Um, I wanted to talk about superpowers because I think, I don't know about you, but I need like a little pumping up. I need, I need a little bit of um, energy, positivity, like, you know, a little gas, a little more gas in the tank because my tank is, you know, I'm sputtering here. And so um, I've been having a lot of conversations with people over this week because I am launching a paid mastermind group. And some of the people, hey, Dakota, Sherry, are in um, in the comments right now who are going to be taking part of that, and I've been hearing a lot of uh, you know pe what people's goals are, what people's struggles are, what they are you know if they think they do well, what they you know want to get better at, and it's just brought a kind of a lot of these superpowers that I want to talk about up uh, kind of top of mind to me, and um, and some of them in particular when I was reading through what I wanted to talk about some of the conversations that I had this week were kind of very much focused around these things. So I think it's very topical. Um, and I think it's going to make a lot of sense for you. Certainly when I was reviewing, you know, the oodles of content that I produced over the last year, few years, um, it seemed, uh, 
you know, pretty apropos to me. Um, so, Savvy, uh, good to see you. Um, let's do a little housekeeping. Um, as I said, the lovely Joselle Tech is moderating. Um, we will probably do some Q&A at the end, like I usually do. And if you have a question, please type the word QUESTION in all caps before your question. And JT, Joselle Tech, will uh, copy and paste that question and shoot it to me in Messenger. So at the end of my chat, um, I'll be able to see all the questions that have come in um, over, over that time without having to scroll through all the comments. And so thank you for doing that. Type all question, type question in all caps for me. And uh, if, let me know if this is coming in too loud. Someone say something because I have to keep an eye on my level. Sometimes I get excited. <laughs> I start, I, I look at my audio readout and I'm like redlining. Um, okay. And... If you are not on my mailing list, if you do not get my brand Muse newsletter, please go to philipvandusen.com slash muse, M-U-S-E, it's on the, on the screen right now, and sign up for Brand Muse. It comes out every couple of weeks. You'll also be on my newsletter, so when I go live, you will get announcements. When I launch things like the Brand Design Masters Guild, you'll hear about that. When I launch things like the Brand Design Masters Facebook group, you'll hear about that. So if you want to be in the know and... Also, the Brand Muse is a, I like to think, is a very inspiring newsletter. Anyone else who gets it, who's watching, who thinks it's inspiring, throw that in the comments, say, hey. Um, and so sign up for that. I'll take those off the screen right now. They will probably be coming back at some point. And as I said, uh, about two weeks ago, maybe a little more, I launched a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group. You have to apply to get in. It's just a couple of questions. You'll get in as long as you answer the questions. And um, it's for entrepreneurs and creative professionals. It's called Brand Design Masters. And it is a community. It's grown very quickly. It's you know pushing 600 members at this point after just a couple of weeks. There are some really great people in there, some super senior people, some very beginner people. It's really a great mix, very inspiring. And people are um, not too loud. Perfect. Thanks, Brooke. I appreciate that. Volume all good. Great. Um, and uh, people are asking great questions. They're offering up incredibly great content to each other. They're critting each other's work. They're offering new resources to each other. It's just turning into like a really incredible, uh, vibrant community. So I encourage you, if you are not um, in the Brand Design Masters Facebook group, that you head on over to Facebook, not now, but you head on over to Facebook and go to Brand Design Masters and apply to get in. And there's also some uh, community rules, so please pay attention to those and read through those rules because it will keep you from doing something that's against community policy and get your comment booted or something like that. Um, elbow bump. Hey, Edwin. Hey, Anita. How are you? Uh, Cecilia. Awesome. Awesome to see you. Um, hey, Colette is here. Rhetorics Communications. Um, Colette is awesome. She is going to be in the, I hope, she is going to be in the Brand Design Masters Guild. And, uh, okay, so head over to Facebook, check that out. Um, and uh, as I said, I'm going to be launching, I am launching right now, the first group is filled as of today. Um, well, it will be filled as of tomorrow. Um, and uh, the Brand Design Masters Guild is a private mastermind for like 10 people very tight. Um, if we we are having more applications, then we'll you know overfill that group. We'll probably we will probably do another group right on top of it um, and form another group. But Brand Design Masters is a mastermind group um, that meets one time a week for an hour, private Facebook group. Um, there is a fee. It's not a it's not a free group. Um, it is uh, fourteen ninety seven for twelve weeks. And uh, you get direct access to me. You're going to meet and interact with some very talented people, network with them, solve each other's problems. It's an incredible experience if you've ever been part of a mastermind. And if you haven't been part of a mastermind, I did a live last week on masterminds in particular. So check that out if you're interested. Again, it's $14.97 for 12 weeks. And if you go to this link, there is the URL that's at the top of the screen. 
there is a um, uh, there's about a ten question, very simple form to collect some information and your goals, where you are in your career, and to opt in to that mastermind. And if you do so, then um, you will be sent to a site where you can get set up a Zoom or a phone call directly with me, one on one. Well, we'll talk about your participation in the guild and um, make sure that you're a good fit. And then we will go from there. So if you're considering being part of a mastermind, and I highly recommend it because it's literally the best thing that you can do for your career, I am absolutely certain of that. It was for me. It has been for everyone I've ever been in a mastermind with. Um, and so check that out. All righty. I'm going to take that off the screen. It will be back. Um, so Yoda, good to see you. I'm going to call you Yoda. It's just easier for me. I'm sorry. Um, Yajoda? I, I know I, I looked up how to pronounce that and I'm forgetting it right now. I'm t so totally sorry. That's so lame. Um, okay. So, um, Savi is answering, asking questions all right, already. So, that's cool. Um, so, let's talk about superpowers. What do you say? Sound good? Um, yeah. Colette's calls for the Guild is tomorrow. I'm very excited to talk to you. I'm doing Pepsi today, not Red Bull, because it's 8 o'clock at night and i got to sleep at some point. Um, slightly healthier for you. I did work at Pepsi, so I do know what's in this. Um, okay. Like I said, my speaking notes went haywire before this started, so I've got a backup, but I'm not going to be able to like stare into the camera like I usually do um, for the most part. Anyway. What I wanted to talk about were superpowers that designers and entrepreneurs need because essentially when it comes down to it, um, it's, it's not enough to just create stuff anymore, um, especially in the time of COVID. You can't just create stuff, know it's fantastic, and expect people to beat a path to your door. The world and the business world, especially the agency and creative professions, are much more complicated than that these days. I'm sure many of you in the group who are watching know that. Um, and so there's a kind of a, a larger group of skills that you have to have that are pretty essential to you know, surviving as a creative professional in this you know, new creative economy. And it, being really good at just one thing really just doesn't cut it anymore. You really have to be more and do more. And some of the things that you need to build are, you know, you need to find out how you can get people to find out about you, right? Which is basically brand awareness. Find out about you. You need to be everywhere that your audience is or be everywhere where your potential clients are. So that is presence, online presence. Um, and then you have to send traffic, excuse me, send those people to your site or to whatever social pro platform or content or your website or a sign-up form or an email list, whatever that is, you want, you need to motivate people to send them places. And then in delivering whatever it is that they're going to that site thing, content, for you need to show up and deliver for them and that will build trust. All of these things take capabilities. They take our understanding of how to work the tools, how to work the system, how to work social media, how to work resources, how to develop content, how to post it, how to repurpose it. All of those things are all really necessary. And so I wanted to share about 14 superpowers and um, we're going to go through them right now. Let me turn on my slides. You guys cool? Everything cool? All right. I know, Mariana, right? In college, I, was, I thought all I had to do was design well, and then everyone would just say, oh, my God, Mariana is the best designer in the world, and I just have to have her stuff. I'll pay her anything that she wants. Well, it doesn't work that way. It didn't then, and it definitely doesn't work that way now. Um, I'm going to see if my cameras are working. Wait, hold on a second. How cool is that? See, I love that. Um, I'm such a geek. So the first thing that you have to have as a superpower is self-awareness. Some of these things I'm going to be talking about today are not like hard skills. They're not like how to edit a video. It's not like how to work Adobe Illustrator. 
it is so, some of them are softer skills or 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 motivational skills or mindset skills and the reason i'm talking about these because they are more the superpowers right they are more the things that they are the glue they are the synapses that hold the whole package together and right now in the world of covid and the stresses that we are under as a people across the world and certainly in our working lives and our professions it's more critical than ever that we really care for ourselves and pay attention to our own um, to our own inner workings and our own motivations and our own strengths and our own challenges to focus on what's going to get us through this and what's going to get us through this with energy and coming out on the other end of it in a better place. And so Chris, yeah, <laughs> Peter says, Buck, this is Buck, by the way. Buck is my mascot, my chartreuse mascot. Um, and uh, you like the front camera better? Okay, all right, let's do this. We'll do that. We'll we'll go back. Okay, staff, you happy? Okay. Um, all right. So, self awareness. Who self awareness is like? Who are you? Who are you? What's your story? What's your authentic story? Where did you come from? How did you get there? What challenges did you have? What do you know now? What did you not know then? All of this contributes to how people understand you, see you, and get to know you. So you have to kind of dig down deep inside a little bit and figure out who you are and what makes you tick. By capturing and kind of bringing those things to the front of your mind, you can consciously bring that to your work, to your clients, to your content, to how you show up. Because if you do it without being thoughtful about it, sometimes you can come off maybe not the way that you really want to. So you want to think about who you are, what motivates you, where you come from, what is your authentic story, and then really own it. Don't consider it to be something that you're fighting or something that you are dragging with you or hanging around your neck like an albatross. Just own it. Because even the people with the toughest stories, the most insurmountable odds who can't you know, have been struggling to make it. They have a story that's authentic that can be very motivating pe to people. And that kind of transparency can be really um, uh, attr attractive or, um, uh, you know, magnetic to people. Um, and then when you do things in that self-awareness and that owning it, owning yourself, you have to take full responsibility for what you do. If you screw up, if you fail, figure out what you did wrong and go forward. If you fail, admit it. Don't try to hide it. Put it out there and say, look, I screwed up and this is what I need to do. This is what I'm doing to fix it. Because that will teach someone else how to get through that. That will teach someone else how to be authentic. Um, and But you have to own it. You have to own that aspect of who you are your self-awareness. All right, now, the next one is networking. And this is not what you think it is. It's not the traditional networking. The traditional networking is who you know, right? The new networking really is who knows you. And that's about showing up and being visible. It's about taking yourself out of your room, your studio. Like I said before, it's not like you can just put your head down on the computer, create the great design, put it up on the, on the interwebs, and then the world's going to be the path to your door. You have to show up and be visible on a lot of different levels. The goal is to increase the number of people that know that you exist. Simple as that. Networking is increase the number of people who know that you exist. And then connect with those people. This could be in the physical world, like conferences, meetups. It could be in the digital world, social media, YouTube, right? Um, it can be through content, videos, blogs, conferences, online, magazines, social. What happened to me? How did people know about me? Yes, I had a great career, corporate agency. I was a very senior person. People knew about me in the industry, but out there in personal brand cyberspace, no one knew about me. And so I started doing YouTube videos. I started writing a newsletter. I started building an email list, started a podcast. I started interviewing other experts 
on podcasts, on YouTube. Um, start a Facebook group, starting a mastermind group. I am letting people know who I am and I'm putting my energy and expertise out there for free for the most part to people to learn and grow from. That's how people know about me. But I'm always working on doing more. So think about how you are, how are you showing up? Where are you showing up? Do people know about you? If they don't know about you, why is that? Are you afraid? I'm going to go into fear later. But are you, are you afraid? Is there something that's holding you back? Do you feel like you don't have something to say? Do you feel like what you say is stupid? You're too junior. You haven't had enough experience. You're too senior. You're too old. You're fuddy-duddy. No one you know, can identify with what you went through two decades ago. You just need to show up and be authentic. Now, number three. Sorry, I thought I switched the slide. Number three is ignoring ignorance. This is one of my favorite ones. I am an island of a man, <laughs> Rebel Leaf says. I need to get out there more. You're not alone. There are a lot of, like I said, I've had some amazing conversations this week with people who are considering joining my, my mastermind group. And even a lot of the most, hey, Jeannie, how are you? Jeannie Barsom's here. Jeannie is a client and she's also one of my old co-workers from Old Navy in my days in the fashion industry. And Jeannie is amazing. She has started, I just have to mention this because it's so cool. Jeannie started a brand called Gifting Brands, where basically they take the overruns that that luxury brands usually like put on clearance and get rid of. And she's getting them she's getting them donated to her company where she sells them at a reduced cost. But the companies that are donating this stuff get get something from it because they got a tax write-off and then genie is able to supply really wonderful premium lovely products to people at a really reduced cost and here's the really cool thing is that the majority of the profits go to charity so it is it's an amazing business and i also did the brand identity so <laughs> Pro bono, but I did. And and Jeannie's amazing. So everyone say hello to Jeannie. Um, and check out Gifting Brands um, because it's a really great brand. Jeannie, you should put the, you'll have to put like dot in parentheses, but put the link in the chat. Anyway, okay, sorry, I digress. Ignoring ignorance. 90% of people, 97% of people don't care anything about what you do. Most of your friends and your family don't really understand what you do. How many times have you tried to start explaining some of the things that you do in social media or, you know, your business or your agency or something to one of your family members, your parents or, you know, your brother? And, and they're like, I don't understand. You know, they, they just kind of go, yeah, yeah, but they don't really understand what you do, right? Or they they may be able to check out or they could be actively negative, right? They could be actively like, why are you doing that? Why are you spending your time, you know, trying to build an audience? Why are you doing this email list thing? Like, I don't get it. Here's the thing. Do not spend a moment of your time trying to explain it to them. You know what you're doing is right. There's no way that you're going to be able to change their mind. They are going to think what they're going to think. And it behooves you and your own internal spirit and energy to not try to convert people. Put your energy into doing your thing. Do your thing and those people who you're adding value and substance and, and great things to with your stuff, they are going to be the ones who are going to understand you. They are going to be the ones that care about you. So ignore ignorance, move forward add value, and the people who really value that, who want to understand you and do understand you, will come to you. Ignore the haters. Okay, that's ignoring ignorance. As I said, you can tell this is kind of a little bit more of a deeper kind of Zen emotional <laughs> presentation uh, tonight than, than is usual. Um, but I just, you know, like I said, for people who may be just joining, I, you know, COVID's been is kind of gets it's a struggle and i'm talking to i'm talking to a whole lot of people these days especially people who are joining the facebook group and a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff 
and it's not easy out there for a lot of people. And um, while I've been very fortunate in my business so far, um, there are a lot of people who are not that fortunate. And I really just wanted to come on and kind of pump people up a little bit, give everyone a little bit of an emotional, you know, booster shot. Um, so let's talk about service and a cute dog picture, two cute dogs. Um, service is all about helping others. So as designers and entrepreneurs, we have a tendency, myself included, to be self-centered, right? We can be. So what you really need to try to do, and especially in times like this where things are hard and you're like, woe is me, right? Or my, I got laid off or I can't get clients or you know, I don't have the motivation to take my pajamas, change out of my pajamas. Um, it's not about you. You have to shift your mind. You have to shift your mind and, and push your art, your point of view, your ideas, your product, your love to other people. Because here is the key. Success equals service. I'm going to say that again. Success equals service. You guys might know or have heard this quote out of my mouth before, but there's a guy named Zig Ziglar. He wrote an amazing freaking book, best book in the world. You should probably read it called See You at the Top. It's about leadership and business. And Zig Ziglar, who is like a legend, said, you can get everything you want out of life by helping others others get what they want out of life. Success equals service. Be of service to other people. Make it not about you. Get out of your own head. Get out of yourself and think about how what you do can be of service to other people. Um, number five. Oops. Oops. Hold on a second. My slide is jumping around. Okay, number five. Everyone with me? Do I need to take a break? All right. Um, number five is marketing. Marketing is about awareness. You may do incredible design, music, photography, illustration, but if you are, n are invisible, then you don't exist. Like I said, you can do incredible stuff. But if you're not visible, if you're not putting it out there, if you're not repurposing it and putting it out across a broad range of platforms, you are invisible. You have to really work at mastering as many platforms out there as you can, and you need to figure out how to send traffic to your stuff, create brand awareness of your existence. The big question is how to send people to what you have to offer. And here's, here's, here's the $97,000 question answered. How you send people successfully to what you have to offer is, drum roll, trial and error. You can have all of the patented systems in the world, but you may try them and they might not work for you. They might not work for your product. They might not work for your avatar. You have to try things. And if they don't work, you try something else. You try something Pay attention to the metrics, to the results. You do it consistently, and if it's not working for you, you pivot, you shift, you do something else. Write articles, take photos, do designs, write a newsletter, create videos, blog, whatever that is. Put your portfolio up on a million portfolio sites. Drop it as a PDF onto LinkedIn. Build that email list. Just start. Just do your stuff. Put it out there. Learn what works for marketing, what works for you for marketing. Yes, you can take courses, you can do all, you know, duplicate people's funnels, but when it comes right down to it, you are going to have to go about this in trial and error. And a lot of people, this is one of the things that really bothers me about my industry, what we do, is that a lot of people hesitate to do things because they're afraid they're gonna do the wrong thing. Doing the wrong thing is the best thing you can do because it tells you it's the wrong thing and then you have to try something else. But the worst thing to do is to hesitate and not do anything and be paralyzed by the analytics of trying to figure out the perfect thing to do. There is no perfect thing to do. You just have to do something, test, pivot, move on, post it, hit publish. There's this great saying, and I know you've heard it. The best time to start a business is 10 years ago. The second best time to start a business is right now. 
You may not have been doing everything that you've been wanting to do. Don't beat yourself up about it. Yes, it would have been great if you would have started a YouTube channel 10 years ago. Yes, it would have been great if you started building your email list and posting lead magnets five years ago. But here's the thing. You can start right now. Start right now. Do something new right now. That's marketing. Sales. Okay, here's the big kahuna, right? As creative people and entrepreneurs, I hear this a lot. But, you know, I'm not a salesperson. I don't like sales. I don't, I don't like doing sales. That's right. You're not a salesperson. What you are is you are a trust person. Your job is to get people to trust you. Because once people trust you, they will buy from you. Once people really trust you, they will do anything to buy from you. And they will tell other people to buy from you. People in today's market can smell a sale a mile away. You have to attract, not project, right? It's not push advertising anymore. It's not push sales. It's attraction. You have to build trust in order to get people to sell, to buy from you. So when you think about sales, this is a mindset thing. Like I said, when you think about sales, don't think about, I am not a salesman. Don't think about being a salesman or doing sales. Think about how you can get people to trust you, how you can get people to trust that you have their best interests in heart, at heart and you are going to give them something of value to make their business better. That's being a salesman. It's a mindset shift. Trust is the most important thing when you're creating things. Um, if you build trust, the sales will come. Okay. The next one, we're halfway there. We're almost halfway there. Seven, empathy. Um, telling, not selling. Good one, John. Absolutely true. Um, if you solve the problem, the people will buy. And that is very true. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, empathy. Put yourself in somebody else's shoes. What is the problem that someone has that you can solve? Or what is the thing that you create, you make, you bring into the world? What problem does that solve from somebody? And if it doesn't solve someone's problem, you have to think about making or doing a different thing. Um, because if it's not solving a problem, it's art. If it's design, it's, it's or, you know, if it's design, it's got a job to do. It's got to be solving a problem. Um, what do those people need? What do they want? You need to ask them if you can't discern it on your own. And... Here's the thing. If you really don't care about that thing that they need, it's going to show. So you really have to, in your heart, care that you want to provide value to people. And I'm going to give a very personal example. When I left my corporate agency gig and I started my own agency, what I really cared about was I saw that Fortune 500 companies could spend $250,000 getting a brand strategy project done by a global agency, and it would propel their business to new heights. But the mom and pop, the $50 million company, the $10 million company couldn't afford to pay $250,000 for a brand strategy job to take their company to new heights. I knew how to do that work. And I wanted to take that methodology, scale it down to something that was appropriate and doable for small to medium-sized businesses and to give them big agency thinking that could propel their business forward without costing them something that they couldn't afford. That was a passion, a deep passion that I had. And it was a great need that those, those companies had. Another example my own career tra trajectory, I won't go into this too deeply, but my own career tra trajectory has been bumpy, right? It's been a very circuitous web of different sorts of things. There's been a lot of struggle in the path that I've chosen um, that, that happened, the path that happened. And I knew how much angst that caused me, and I know how much I learned through every step of that, that path, that journey. And I'm a very much of a teacher at heart, started my career teaching. I have trained and led and motivated and taught designers through my whole career. Teaching is what I love to do. And so when I came out on my own and started developing content, 
I said, I want to share everything that I know that was important to my development and growth with all of the people who are creative professionals and designers in the world so they don't have to do go through some of the things that I went through and hopefully get over some of the hurdles or get answers to some of the questions that I had. Um, and I know that they needed that. And I really, really cared about it. I'm circling back. So if you don't care about the problem that you're solving, it's going to show. And if you don't care, that means it's still all about you. You have to care and have empathy to someone else's problem, someone else's need, and then figure out what is it that you have in yourself that you can provide them that's going to make their lives better in one way or another. You have to yearn to give value to other people. And so if you're only in it for you, you will fail. If you're only in it for you, you're really just a fine artist because fine art is really about your own experience, your own vision, and hopefully someone else will see it and understand it. But, um, and not to be down in fine artists, I studied painting, so I'm, <laughs> I started as a fine artist. But in the difference between you know design, creative professions, and the fine arts, that's one of those big inflection points. Um, gift box creative Ivan here uh, great to see you guys Brianna Brianna's here um, I had a great conversation with Brianna um, this week um, okay next slide here we go you guys with me talking and communicating Do not, designers and, and entrepreneurs a lot of th times think here's what I hear a lot my work speaks for me no your work does not speak for you you speak for you your work speaks does in, in the problem that the work is trying to solve. You have to learn how to communicate about your own work, what you think, articulate what the problem is, articulate how you solve the problem, um, practice the art of conversation and explaining. I, I want to share another conversation that I had with someone today, in fact, very accomplished designer who's been in the industry quite some time, beautiful work. And she struggles with being able to articulate um, her work and how it solves business problems and how to speak strategically about what she does and the problems that she solves. And so that's one of the things that she really needs to work on and wants to work on. But what that shows to me is that people at every single level constantly need to work on how they articulate what it is that they do. Talk to people, ask them questions. You will hear back the problems that they have. And then you can, in hearing those problems, you can start to kind of tabulate, record in your brain how those problems are articulated so you can repeat them back to people so they can identify with the problem and trust that you have that solution. Um, talk to people, communicate. Um, talking, speaking, um, it will create that level of trust and that level of affinity with people. Ask questions. If, you, if you're really introverted and you have a really hard time talking to people, just ask questions. People love to be asked questions. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a conference and felt like a wallflower, like you know, fish out of water, and you just find someone who looks like they're alone too, and then you just start asking them a whole lot of questions. It is the absolute best way to break the ice, and you would be amazed at what you can learn and the people that you can meet. And um, I want to tell you another story. You might have heard this in one of my videos, and I've told it before. Hold on. Give me a sec. There was a study done, and this is one of my favorite studies. There was a study done. They took two people, and they put them into a cocktail party. And one person was told to go into the cocktail party and only ask questions about from other people. They weren't told to talk about themselves, introduce what they do, tell any stories about their family, any of that. They just asked questions of the people that they were talking to. They took another person and they said, go into this cocktail party and, when, and in conversation, share your name, your family, what you do, clients you work for, your specialties, your skills, ask questions, have a normal conversation, but share more, share about what you do. And so at the end of this research, they did this 
they did a survey of all the people who were in the party and they said, which of these two people was more interesting? Which of them was more talented? Which of them did you like better? Which of them um, was more accomplished? And the person who did nothing but ask questions of other people was the most accomplished, most talented, most likable, and of, of the two people, which is an amazing, amazing study. Take from that what you will. I know what I take from it. Um, okay, next. <sighs> All right. I'm not running out of gas yet. Um, you guys doing okay? Is everyone good? Um, I'm really looking forward to answering some questions at the end. So if you have a question or if you just have a comment that you want me to bring up as a topic or a theme of conversation after we, after I finish my little chat, um, do that. Okay. So consistency, um, you need to show up in order to be authentic, in order to tell your story, in order to hear, ask questions of people, you have to show up. So you want to set a consistent delivery schedule of you showing up, whether that's showing up in a blog or in videos or in Instagram posts or Instagram lives or, you know, conferences or posting designs, if that's just what you do or posting videos, um, just creative work, publishing an e-comic, whatever that is, you just want to set a schedule and show up. Here's what happens. Anyone who is magnetically attracted to what it is you're doing will become to want to anticipate getting from you what they like from you. If you show up consistently and deliver that thing consistently, you develop an affinity and a magnetism that grows and gets stronger over time. People will start to share about you with other people and your audience will grow. Regular output creates better output. And I, there's this great quote by a guy named Jan Gerard, who is a kind of a star on medium, right? He's a great blogger, article writer. And um, he said something once that I thought was so brilliant. He said, the only way to cut through the noise is to become the signal. And I thought that was an amazing quote. The only way to cut through the noise is to become the signal. And that is what being consistent does. It's setting up a cadence of your showing up and putting value, whatever that is, that thing, that stuff that you do out into the world that creates value for other people. And you become the signal. You become the waveform that's traveling through the ether and supplying people with value. People come to expect it. And you have to show up. You have to show up consistently. You have to be visible. Superpower. Consistency. I would say, sorry, I would say that consistency of all these superpowers I'm talking about tonight is probably the biggest superpower of all. Um, if you can show up consistently, you can be doing crap work. And no, I take that back. I, that was that was kind of bombastic. But you get my point. It's like consistency is everything. You can't just show up once. You can't just do three blog posts and go, oh, it didn't work. And, you know, I'll never do a blog post again. Um, you got to show up consistently. I, Roberto Blake, who's a friend of mine and, and a great YouTuber, um, posted a tweet recently. And he had like, I don't know, three or four or five like seriously major YouTubers who have millions and millions of subscribers now. And he had stats on how many followers they had after they'd posted a hundred videos, right? These were huge, massive YouTubers. And it was like, after a hundred videos, this guy had like a thousand viewers. After a hundred videos, this gal had 750 uh, subscribers. You have to show up consistently over time. Anything is possible if you do that. Um, Oh, I jumped onto writing already. My slide is on writing. Um, if you're a creative professional or entrepreneur and you write, you are already 75% better than every other creative person out there because um, you're more employable, you're more promotable, you're more visible. Writing will help you reach a larger audience. It would help you also, here's the interesting thing about writing or producing written content. It helps you gather your thoughts. 
And if you're doing it consistently and having to write content on a schedule, you will eventually, very quickly what happens when you do that is you kind of hit a wall and you go, wow, I've been doing this for three months and I'm now out of ideas. And what happens is you become really good at finding inspiration regularly in order to feed your um, your practice of writing. And so you become a student of finding inspiration and being inspired by things and seeing them out there that you say, oh, that's an interesting subject. This is how I'm going to do my take on that. Or I have a thought about that. Or I have a twist on that that's slightly different that I'm going to put out to my audience. And so by writing and going through that process and doing it regularly, deadlines can force you to become a inspirational superpower, super ninja, and make you smarter and help you communicate better. All right, I'm moving ahead. Um, okay, authenticity. This one is a lot like the first one in you know owning it and and being yourself. Um, you can't fake it. You have to be true because in the world of social media, people can see through a faker like in two seconds. And if you go out there as a faker, you'll never shake it. Do what you care about. Do what you love. Create what's valuable to other people. Care about people. Be yourself. Don't be a poser. People can smell a poser a mile away. People hate fakers. Live your story. Be your story. Be authentic. And here's what they say, right, about liars. Like if you're a liar, you always have to remember your lies. So you, you have to make up lies to make up for your lies. If you're authentic and true to yourself, then you never have to... You, all you have to do is show up and be authentic and that is and not act because people can smell an actor a mile away too um and so authenticity is incredibly important and i know it's also it's like one of those words like innovation or you know that's been thrown around forever and ever or think outside the box or whatever that is and these terrible business colloquialisms right or you know what meme words. I don't even know how you say what that is. Um, but authenticity is truly when it comes to personal branding and building a, uh, a personal brand as a creative professional or a business or an agency, you have to be true to yourself. You have to be true to your clients. And anything that is a suit of a costume that you're putting on isn't going to last. Um, number 12, be interesting. <laughs> and I know, I know this is hard for some people. It's like, oh shit, I'm not interesting. I'm boring. What do I, I'm not like, you know, I don't have a laptop lifestyle. I can't like sh show everybody my Lamborghini and all this, you know, but being interesting is all about taking chances. It's about being adventurous. It's about trying something new. It's about going places. It's, it's going places. It's about doing things. Fail, do stuff and then fail at it and then tell the story about it. People love a failure story. People love failure stories so much it makes them trust you more because you're being authentic. And it also makes people love you because they, it makes them want to feel like they can be vulnerable too. And that's, you know, when friendships are forged, you start to be vulnerable with each other and that's what draws people closer. So explore, gather stories, interact with people. Be human, you know, be authentic. It all builds to being interesting. And then tell those stories, the failures, the successes, the travels, whatever that is. Um, because it's interesting. And your own particular human perspective, someone is going to get gra gravitate towards. When I started my own content, I was like, no one cares about my history. No one cares about what I know or what I did or, you know, my struggles. And... I did this one video, and some of you probably saw it. It was um, um, it was on uh, being a multi-creative. Um, if it's difficult uh, being a multi-creative, a lot of creative professionals, creative people are creative in more than one thing. And this video, like, really struck a chord. I mean, I know I've always struggled with it being, uh, you know, a fine artist, a musician, um, a graphic designer, um, and you know, scuba diver and being pulled in a lot of different creative 
uh, directions. But it was amazing. And just sharing about my own story and struggling with, um, you know, some, some barriers, some painful barriers that I've met in my life when, you know, I had to hang up my, my fine art paints and get a career. Incredibly painful moments in my life where I had to make real hard decisions about what I was doing in my life, in my, in my creative, you know, pursuits and what they meant to my livelihood and life. But when I was really honest and authentic about it, it opened up like this huge Pandora's box of people identifying with that. So that's, and I'm not saying that that's, I know my be interesting unicorn slide is still up. I'm not saying that that's like incredibly interesting, but what I'm saying is, is that that level of transparency and authenticity about your own particular story um, is interesting and it can generate connection with people. That's really what I'm trying to get down to is like it can g generate connection with people. Um, all right, now I'm going to move on again. Da, 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 da. This is one of my favorite ones because it is, this is the unlock. This is the skeleton key, one of the skeleton keys to success, I think. And particularly in this time right now, because we're all I don't know about you, but I am. I'm pretty afraid. Like, I get terrified when I go to the grocery store. And um, this situation is fraught with danger, right? Real danger. And so, but, and there's, there's all sorts of fear in our lives. There's fear to try something. There's fear with the situation that we're in. But having that level of residual fear from that makes everything else that we're usually fearful of even more feel <laughs> more scary because our emotional reserves are low, right? And so one of the things about fear that I've always found to be really telling is that when you're fearful about doing something, it generally means that you're on the right track. Because if you're afraid of doing something, you're growing and you're pushing boundaries and you're trying something new. You may be afraid because you don't know what the results are going to be. And doing what you are afraid of makes you stronger and it makes you smarter. I recommend that you try to do one scary thing every day. And this is along the lines of my be 1% better every day. Try to do one scary thing every day. Here are some scary things. Emailing an old connection or coworker that you haven't talked to in 10 years on LinkedIn shoot them a LinkedIn message, say, how are you doing? What do you, you know, how's it going at X job that you see that they're at? Wasn't it cool our years at, Jeannie's here, Old Navy. What, wasn't it, you know, wasn't that cool that project that we worked on ages ago? Make a connection, right? Or write a blind email to someone, to a company that you saw their website and you're like, boy, that website really needs some help. And you have an idea for them and you, use their contact form on their website and shoot them an email and say, I had an idea about your website. You might want to try this. It's asking someone, someone for something that you are afraid to ask them for. Reaching out to your network with someone that you don't really know. Trying a new thing. Posting for an article for your first time. Going live on Instagram. Um, there's any number of things you can do that will absolutely terrify you. I guarantee you that, right? I mean, there's, I talked to a lot of people this week who, you know, were talking about the, the brand design masters guild who were saying things that scare them or things they know that can move their business or their practice forward, but they're afraid of doing. And, um, if you just try to do one little small Siri thing every day, it makes you stronger, makes you smarter. And if you're afraid, it means that you're growing. And that's the real takeaway I want you to have from this particular Number 13, the lucky fear slide, <laughs> is, that, is that fear is not always a bad thing. Fear can protect you and fear can show you that you're actually on the right track in making progress. Um, and finally, my favorite, which is teach. If you learn something new, teach somebody else. This is, again, it's about giving. It's not about you. It's about being of service, success, what I say, success equals service. Being of service to other people will mean success for you. 
and it's also it, it will it will solidify whatever it is that you're teaching and sharing in your own brain. So you'll get better and more expert at it. It'll make you f- feel useful and valuable. It will improve your own self esteem. It will build people's trust in you. And as we know, we're not salespeople; we're trust people. And it will create value in the world. And as I talk about the Corona thing and the global aspects of the situation that we're in, creating value in the world is a great thing. And, uh, and ultimately, what it really means is it builds good karma for everybody, for you, for the person you're serving, and for the world in general. Um, and those are the 14 superpowers that I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, so that's that. And, um, I'll make sure to put all 14 down in the chat or the the comments after I post this. But, um, I really enjoyed here. I'm going to, I'm going to piss off Steph and I'm going to move back to side cam. (laughs) If Steph is still here, she doesn't like my side cam here. Wait, I'll do this. Multicam. All right. Um, now let's do some questions. What do you say? I am ready to answer some questions. I hit an hour like almost on the dot, 8.56. I don't know how that is, but it always seems like when I when I go live and I present something that I want to talk about, it always is like exactly an hour. It's funny. All right. Let's look at some questions. All right, I'm scrolling back. Um, there's just a few. So if anyone has any more questions, I know it's nighttime. Um, and also if you could, you know, some of you I know are on the East coast, like Peter is and Joselle's in the Philippines. So she's like exactly 12 hours difference. Um, but weigh in where you are in the world. And if this is a good time for you, like, is it a good time to, to, to watch a live in the evening or is it better if you can break from the middle of your day and watch it? Are you more awake? Would you rather be spending time watching, you know, Netflix right now? <laughs> um, I hope not. Um, okay, let's look at some questions. Wow. Okay, this question. What are the challenges with design and deployment of a certain celebrity Instagram campaign to launch a consumer product startup? i.e. Joe Rogan types. What are the challenges with design and deployment, design and deployment of a celebrity Instagram campaign to launch a consumer product startup? Savvy, you're going to have to get a little more specific around that. That's like a gigantic question. I I can't even, I can't even address that. Um, You're going to have to be a little more specific. The challenge with design and deployment, it's, yeah, I'm sorry. I need help with that one. Okay, I'm going to try a different one. Maybe I should try to, try to filter them before I actually um, go into them. Hold on. All right. Um, do you think designers who are suffering now overextended themselves? Um, that's also actually from Savvy too. Well, who, who are designers who are suffering? Do they overextend themselves? No, I don't think, I I think the situation that we're in is that no one's responsible for what's happening right now. I mean, um, if you have a designer in mind who you think that, no, I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm kind of stuttering. Um, I don't think that the situation and how it's affected people revolved around whether they had overextended themselves if this, if this is is affecting them more because of it. Okay. All right. Luis says, a lot of these points that I'm talking about, I guess, are all about employing time. So time management is important. What can you tell us about time management in your experience? Actually, Luis, this is a really interesting thing because um, I did a survey in my email list about a year ago and I asked people one question. I said, what is the biggest thing that you're struggling with in your business? And there were, and the two things that rose to the top out of 256 responses that I got was number one, time management was number one. 
And number two was clients, getting more clients. And that blew me away because I didn't know that. And um, I knew I was going to find out some new stuff when I did that survey. But the thing that was really amazing to me was how many people in business, entrepreneurs, creative professionals, struggle with time management and organization. And I really think the reason is, um, I really think the reason is, is because the internet, right? And notifications and how many different platforms there are. And the visual activity that happens on screens while we are on screens all day long. Because, and here's the other thing, is that social media has gotten attention grabbing down to a science. Like they know, Facebook knows exactly how to draw you around from one thing to another. So does Twitter, so does Instagram. They, they know the human psyche and how to attract attention better than anybody from all the testing that they've done over time. And so I think time management is a huge issue. And the more that you can work on it on your own, the better you are. And the more you can focus your own attention by either closing multiple windows, turning off notifications, closing down your email window, um, so you can do focused work, the better. The other thing that I personally do when I'm struggling with time management is I try to schedule every single half hour of my day and I put it on my calendar before the day begins. Sometimes I deviate from it because you have to stuff comes up, but at least it maps out for me an intended activity of every hour of the day. Um, and that really helps me anyway. Okay. Um, Bigoto's got to go. Okay, that's a bummer. Good to see you. Um, okay. Mariana says, don't just post the images and hope they understand the whole project, the goals, the challenges we have to communicate in writing too. Yes, Mariana, that's a really good point. And as I was reviewing some people's portfolio sites uh, this week who had sent them to me, um, I was shocked with how many people were just posting images of their work, that they weren't posting anything about the project itself. They weren't posting um, you know, what the project was, what the brief was, what the purpose of it was, what the challenge, business challenge the company had, what that was. Um, they were relying totally on the beauty pageant of the work to sell. And what that does them a disservice because if they put a lot of think and strategic thinking and strategic thinking into the work that they produced and there was a problem that they were solving, that they were successful in solving, they should be telling that story because clients who come to that, yes, they'll be wowed by the pretty pictures, but they want to know what the problem was that the designs solved, what the results were, what the client thought, um, who the target market was, what the purpose of it was, what was the occasion it was being done for. So writing case studies and featuring them on your site or around your work, wherever that is, um, is real important. And there are a lot of people who don't do it, which is shocking to me. Um, uh, Rhetorics. So Colette says, we should, we should, uh, should we try to cultivate, uh, eventually cultivate all these superpowers or just focus on a few and effing own them. <laughs> like finding your niche business offering, um, finding your superpower, your niche superpower. Um, yeah, just like Luisa's question about, you know, time management. It's like you can't overwhelm yourself and try to do 14 things at once. Um, I think what I would do looking at that, this list that I went through, when even when putting it together myself, I have a tendency to kind of zero in on one particular or two particular things that I feel like I'm not doing as well or um, I'm lacking in. And I will try to bring those to the top of mind for a few weeks and think about them. Um, you can't do all of them at once, but um, that's why I run through things like this in kind of numbered sequence like that, because I think that people will glom onto you know, one thing or another as you do a survey like this, and it will help them see either, you know, either that's something that they feel really comfortable with and they're doing well and they're happy with, and they're like, yes, I'm really totally effing nailing that. Or you can say, yeah, I'm like thinking about myself way too much. 
right? I'm not thinking about, I'm thinking that people are going to come to me for my beautiful work. And then I'm not putting myself out there. I'm not facing my fear. I'm not taking chances. Whatever that is in there that I was shared about that you went, oh, you cringed or you, you know, kind of like looked aside. Um, focus on that one. Um, Peter says, what's the best superpower for a timid person to employ? Speaking for a friend. Um, I think, Peter, the the best the best one is learning to uh learning to break out of the introversion shell and talk to people and i say that because more will be unlocked from opening yourself up being authentic and talking to people and learning how to have conversations than anything else because that's what that's what brings you into a broader network of people and relationships and learning to how to have those conversations and ask about what people do, ask what's important to them, share with them where you are, what you're doing. I think if there's one superpower in here that is probably the most important, it's communication because communication, whether that's written or talking, is is the basis of everything. Um, and particularly for people who are, you know, introverted or shy. Um, I had a, I had a, a, a zoom with a guy this week who is a, you know, he's an illustrator and considers himself to be very shy. And when we started off the conversation, he was kind of shy. Um, but I drew him out and he also got more comfortable with me over time. And within five minutes, you would never have thought that this guy was a shy guy. So it's about, I think, getting over that initial hurdle of hesitation, of fear, um, and, and, and opening up because so much can be gained from that. Um, I was painfully shy when I was younger, um, and I've gotten a lot less shy as I've gotten older and more confident. But I think that having those sorts of, you know, opening yourself up and taking chances and facing that fear of talking to someone new um, is the best thing that you can do. And I found for myself anyway, that asking questions is the unlock to that aspect of, of improving um, how you go about things. Um, okay. Uh, Yagoda said, uh, regarding point one and admitting openly who you are and your failures. Can you share with us one of your biggest failures or wrong decisions you ever made? Oh, wow. <clears throat> hmm. That's big. Um, yeah, and I, I, I will. One of the I think one of the, I mean, you could look at every inflection point in my career and say it was like a big mistake, but it was also probably the beginning of something fantastic. Um, and uh, I think one of the hardest things I ever did was um, when I was working at, I was still, be, I was still pursuing uh, being a, a, a painter and a, a uh, fine arts teacher in university and I was working at a frame shop in New York City um, and I was trying to continue painting and I was getting more and more unhappy and depressed and feeling boxed in um, by all of the things I couldn't I, I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do commercial art. I didn't want to do computers. I didn't want to work for the man. I didn't want to work in an agency. I didn't work, work in a company. I, I had set out all these things as a fine artist, as a pure purist that I would never do. And I struggled along with those brick walls of things I would never do for a long, for years, three or four years from the time it, I think, first started to manifest itself until the time when I basically had almost a nervous breakdown and um, and become became really depressed and had to go to, into therapy. And what therapy showed me was that I had built these walls for myself and saying things that I wouldn't do. 
and um, those walls, when I looked at them for what they were and started breaking them down and trying some of the things that I was curious about, like doing you know art on computers, it opened up this entirely new world for me. And I think the biggest mistake I had made, one of the biggest mistakes I made in my life was was uh, allowing myself to be limited by my preconceptions of what was right and wrong for that period of time. Because I didn't start, I didn't start into design and t- into my professional uh, design career until I was 33 years old. So anyone who tells me like I'm too old when I'm 24 or 28 or whatever to like change careers or be a designer, I'm like, ha ha, <laughs> you, you have no idea. Um, so anyway, that was a great question. I love soul searching questions like that. You guys probably don't care to hear about it. <laughs> but anyway, that was probably one of the deepest pits of my, of my, um, my professional web of my career, I think. It was the hardest one. And I, and I talk about it a lot in that, that create, um, uh, that creative video, that multi-creative video. Um, I also, I think, I also think, I think I talk about it in my interview on the Futures podcast with Chris Doe. Um, wait a second, this is a commercial break and I'll go back to questions. Um, I am starting a Facebook group. I've started a Facebook group a few weeks ago. Anyone who's watching who isn't part of it, please uh, go to Facebook, Brand Design Masters, groups slash Brand Design Masters and join my new Facebook group full of amazing creative professionals and entrepreneurs. I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I'm sure Joselle will put the link in chat when I turn this slide off. Groups, Brand Design Masters. And then um, I did want to say that um, I'm launching a, uh, a paid mastermind group. Eight to 10 people, very tight, 12 weeks, um, one hour a week of um, this group meeting very intensive, uh, intensely about goals, accountability, helping each other with their businesses. The price is uh, 1497, 14, you know, 1497 um, for uh, 12 weeks. And so you'll get personal attention from me for, from tw- for 12 weeks. You'll be able to meet and get to know very deeply and int- intimately eight or nine other uh, accomplished entrepreneurs. And so if you're interested, um, it's going to launch very shortly. And the first group is filled up. The second group is filling up. Um, and if you're interested in doing that, go to this link, tinyurl.com slash BDM dash mastermind. And you can fill out a very short form and, um, and put your hat in the ring to join that mastermind. It would be a groundbreaking experience in your career if it's something that you're interested in. And but I'm going to put this up here too. Um, Daniel Scott, um, I'm an affiliate of Daniel Scott's. Daniel Scott is a certified Adobe trainer. He does absolutely incredible um, uh, video training for Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, Premiere, all the C, uh, do, most of the C, uh, Adobe CC um applications the subscription on his website is only twelve dollars a month it is insane the value he is giving away for twelve dollars a month you have access to all i think 28 or 29 of his videos um he's a certified adobe trainer as i said byol.me slash philip is how you can access um it's an affiliate link i get a couple bucks that's a way of supporting me um, another way of supporting me is Super Chat. So you might see an icon, a little dollar sign or something underneath the chat window. If you ever want to support me with Super Chat, I really appreciate any kind of tips. <laughs> I take tips. Uh, play Piano Man for you. Um, uh, yeah, Rebel says, I just finished that guy's Adobe course. It was wicked. Yeah, my wife is actually taking an intro um, Adobe Illustrator class right now, and she says it's amazing. And um, I've had him. I've interviewed him on my show. He and I are, are quite... Uh, good friends and um, he's incredible and, and he's got a killer accent so it's great to listen to him when you're tr- doing your training um, so uh, if there are any other questions there are a few I'll go through them but um, if you have a question type question in all caps before your question ah very good question uh, D draw Droster um, Asks, what should be covered when writing case studies for your projects? 
client, uh, the problem to be solved, the customer, who it was for, what you created, why it was correct, and what the results were. I mean, that's short paragraph leading into the creative. So it's like client, name of the project, what was the problem that was being solved, what was your agency approach to it, what was your solution, what were the results. Those are the most important things to hit because that's what clients want to know, right? So you have to name it, say what the project was, but then they want to know what was the problem that you were solving and what was the results. Um, okay. Edwin says, I'm thinking about starting my own freelance business. I have a BFA in design and photography. Congratulations. I have a studio at home, but my computer is almost 10 years old. Ouch. Should I invest in a new Mac, iMac for work? Of course. Yeah. If you can, <laughs> everyone should get a new iMac. I have an iMac Pro, which I'm just totally in love with. Um, but if your computer is 10 years old and you're going to be doing photography, um, yeah, I would probably get a new one. And, um, and iMacs, like, you don't have to get an iMac Pro. You don't have to get, like, a six or $8,000 iMac Pro. I mean, they make very nice iMacs. The base ones are, like, I don't know, what are they, 12, 2,000, 2,000, 2,500, something like that. Um, and they're really great. Love, I'm a Mac guy. Been Mac guy my whole life. It's, people ask me about, like, what PC laptop I should buy in my comments on my YouTube channel. I'm like, got me. Um Sorry, scrolling. Um, L, L63, how do you get yourself out there when you don't know anyone? How you do that is you join the Brand Design Masters Facebook group, and then you introduce yourself, and then you say, I don't know anybody. Here's the thing. This is the thing about being authentic and transparent, is if you don't know anybody and you want to get to know some people, here's what you do. You go on this group and you say, I don't know anybody. I want to make some connections. You want to say hello? You want to get on a Zoom? I'd love to meet you. Love to hear about what you do. Make it about them, right? Like what I said. And just put it out there because the more you put it out there that you just want to make connections and meet people and hear about people. And then the other thing you can do is just like get involved in the groups, make comments on, on threads that are going on in the group, interact with someone else's comment. Say, wow, I thought so too, or, you know, blah, 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 blah. Direct message that person. Start conversations. The cool thing is, is it's really easy to start conversations and start to build relationships online because there's so much, there's like zero pressure involved. And you can, you can build a, a really deep relationship without ever even seeing each other. It's just all about making that leap and, and doing that outreach. And again, being totally transparent about what it is that, you, what you are, and what you want. I don't know anybody. I want to make some professional friends. You want to chat? <laughs> you know, that's how easy it is. But I know that's absolutely terrifying when you have, aren't used to doing that. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, I'm sorry to make it like so flippant. My answer is so flippant. Um, but it is really literally that easy. Um, okay, I'm a painter, abstract work. What's the best way to brand? What's the most effective way to get your work out into the public? Um, in the fine arts, I'm probably not the best person to ask about the fine arts right now. Um, if you are an abstract painter, the best, the best way is to start posting your stuff, as much of your stuff as possible across the internet and, um, and in, in trying to find your way into fine art, other fine arts groups. And I know that there are fine arts Facebook groups, there's painters groups, and um, start getting to know and interacting with other painters and ask them those questions. Because there will be people who are doing it. Find the people who are doing it better than you are. Find the people who are doing what you would like to be doing, and then just start doing it. Start acting like them. Start doing the stuff that they're doing. Because, you know, that's how business works too, right? Businesses follow each other. Businesses copy each other like crazy. If you find a business or a painter or an artist or a plumber or a 
carpenter or someone who's doing it better than you are, start mimicking what they're doing. And, you know, it's, you'll learn a lot and you'll also become a student of what it is, where the place is that you want to be. So that's, and if you're saying, you know, I don't know where to put it, then you're not out there looking, not know where to put my artwork, your artwork. Then you're not out there looking around at other people who are doing what you're doing and trying to do what you want to do or be what you want to be. You have to become a student of the people who are being successful in what you want to do and start. And you can shoot them an email and say, you know, I'm a, I'm a budding abstract painter and I'm really, really impressed with your portfolio and your website and all the stuff that you're doing. And I, and I'd love to get five seconds of your time on a zoom call just to introduce myself and to ask you a couple questions. Um, anyway, that sort of stuff works. Um, okay. Muttman says I'm an old school designer, Adobe skills, but no development experience should I use how should I use my time learn to code create a site use a simple site like Wix use a basic portfolio site um, if you're an old school designer meaning you're older if you're older yeah don't I, I wouldn't say spend your time learning to code um, if you're an old school designer like you're just a purist um, and you'd rather spend your time designing than writing code then don't write code. There's very little reason to be writing code these days unless you are a developer because the WYSIWYG sites like Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, you know, even WordPress um, are remarkably simple these days. And there's and if you're talking about coding in order to like do something on your site, you can hire somebody to do anything that you want to do on your site that you can't do, even if it's like on Squarespace or Wix. You can. There are people who specialize in writing um, custom code for those sites that do it very cheaply. So there's no reason you should learn to code. No. Design. Create a great site. Do more design. Get clients. Do work for them. Ah, uh, yes. Um, thank you, Colette. I appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Um, I appreciate that 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 comment, um, Colette. If you have a question, I'd be happy to answer it for your super chat. Um, uh, Luis says, "Are you available for questions by email?" Generally, no, Luis. Uh, part of my business is I coach creative professionals, and I get I get paid an hourly rate to do that. Um, I also offer a great deal of my um, my uh, expertise in my in my paid mastermind group. Um, I offer an incredible amount of free um, knowledge and experience on YouTube for free. Um, and uh, but if I if I was to answer every email on career guidance or 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 questions or business development that I get from people um, via email, then I never get anything done all day. I certainly wouldn't be developing videos or a podcast or a newsletter or servicing my clients. So uh, I, I'm sorry, but I don't. Um, I do answer questions here if I can. Um, okay. Any other questions, anybody? Did, why did I shave my mustache? I shaved my mustache because I was bored. Ayub, I was. Um, I, I did bring the black t-shirt back for tonight. I'm sure you guys noticed, right? I was, <laughs> I gotta tell you, I was gonna wear this, like, I told you I was gonna start wearing my more my brighter shirts, right? My signature pattern shirts I used to wear back in the fashion industry. Anyway, I broke out this one, which is like crazy loud. I love it. Looks great in real life. But on video, it's pretty freaking bright. And I wore it in my, I wore it in my uh, mentoring call with Joselle um, Tech this morning. And when she saw me on video, she literally started laughing. And I was just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't wear this tonight. So I chickened out. I chickened out because you laughed at me, Joselle. I just want to say that. Um, maybe I'll wear it next time. Um, yeah. And Luis, yes. Go to the brand design masters Facebook group and ask there. There's about 500 people who will gladly help answer your question there. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I shaved cause I was just a little bored and, um, I just needed a change. Um, and that's why I started wearing pattern shirts instead of just black t-shirts all the time too. Um, 
Uh, Brooke, thank you. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, watercolor art in Cape Town said, uh, LOL, I chopped my hair because I was bored. Yeah, I know. I just needed a change. Uh, thanks, Mutt Man, about the cool glasses. Um, and all right, so let's see. Did I miss anything in the questions arena? I definitely am flagging a little bit more because it's 925 at night. I've, I've been in my office now for 14 hours. <laughs> That's how bad. It'll be a very long day. I met with Joselle at 8 a.m. I was actually in the office at 7 a.m. and now it's 9:25 at night, and I'm still here. This is the life of a content creator. So be careful what you wish for. <laughs> um, all right, I'm just gonna scroll back and see if I missed anything. It's so much fun being here with you guys, though. I have a fun time. Um, I hope you do too. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to scroll. Okay, Jeannie, Jeannie Barsom said, I do not have a blog yet. Any advice um, or courses to get started? Um, Jeannie, here's the thing. To start blogging, you just got to... Here's, here's the beautiful thing about blogging. When you first start blogging, it's the most terrifying time to hit those publish the first times you write something. But the beauty of it is, is that no one's watching. No one's watching for a good few months. So you have a really clear, empty runway to start blogging under. Um, and the only way to start blogging is to start writing. Just start, you know, write something that's a thousand words long and po post it on LinkedIn. I actually think that most people should start posting publicly rather than on a private blog because actually getting traffic to a blog is is hard and you have to get people off of the site that they're on and drive them to your website where they're only going to have your content you have a much greater chance of getting some eyeballs on your work if you post in a public forum um, whether that's a facebook group that you're a part of or whether that's on medium or it's on linkedin I am a big proponent of LinkedIn these days, especially for creative pros because you can really stand out. And you can post articles there and people will see them. Just post post a blog post right in the main you know news section of the news feed, um, not even as a separate article. And start that way because you're going to get more feedback. You're going to get more eyes on it and it's going to be more instructive into what is magnetic to people, what people are liking or not liking. If you're just writing on a blog on your website, chances are you're not going to get a lot of traffic there unless you already have a tremendous amount of traffic on your, on your website. Um, but how you get started, pick a subject, get inspired by something. What's your take on this particular thing? You saw a great article last week. It was on X in the subject matter that you're interested in. What's your take on that subject? Write a thousand words about that, post it on LinkedIn. That's how you get started. Um, just start posting. Will I wear the bright polo shirt? It wasn't a polo. Joselle calls my button down shirts polos. I don't know why, but they're not polos. I, I own very few polos, but I do wear a lot of button down shirts. Um, anyway, yes, I will. I will wear it. Um, some, I'll, yeah, I'll wear it tomorrow. I'll wear it tomorrow for our meeting. Um, all right, guys. And I, and so I'm going to, I'm going to check out, I'm going to give you guys 15 seconds because that's about the lag time. Anyone who, I'll give you 30 seconds. Anyone has one last question who wants to ask, ask, because I'm going to sign off. It's been an hour and a half. I'm tired. You guys have been awesome um in coming and and uh sharing the evening with me i really really appreciate it. it's been a lot of fun and i hope that you have gotten something out of uh the 14 superpowers that i shared about tonight because i really care about you and i care about the creative uh professional and entrepreneurial community and i know how difficult it is right now I'm a pretty resilient guy, and when I'm feeling it, I know that there's a whole lot of other people feeling it. And um, I've been in the Facebook uh, group that I started listening, interacting, hearing people. And um, also, when I approve people, I ask them to tell me about their business and how they're doing right now. Excuse me. And uh, and I've been hearing a lot of people struggling. So. Um, I think all the questions are popping in. Um, so 
I thought it was really important to kind of talk about some of these top line motivational t- type of subjects that um, it's good to keep in mind in order to keep growing and keep pushing forward and keep trying to get better and to think about things that aren't just the next piece of work that you're putting out or the next design that you're doing or the next thing that you're writing or the next video that you're editing, but to think about some of these larger, these larger um, topics and issues that can be really motivating and, and keep us fueled and keep us going um, in this trying time. Um, okay. A few questions came in really quickly. Um, okay. When in your career did you notice ageism? Oh, wow. That's a really good question, Trench. Um, I've been the victim of ageism. Um, but I think the first time I actually recognized it when was when I was hiring. I was a vice president of design at a major fashion company. And I was hiring a colorist. So the, one of the people who develops color standards. Um, I was overseeing graphic design for apparel. CAD textile design, color, trend, uh, packaging, number of different areas. And I was hiring a colorist and I thought this person was great. And I set up the uh, interview with my uh, EVP, um, my boss. And um, he saw her and one of the comments that he made was he said he thought that she was too old for the job. And I was shocked by that. I didn't like report him to HR, um, but I took I took him to task on it. But it was one of the first times that I had had someone just really overtly tell me that they thought that someone wasn't going to fit in to this. You know, fashion uh, companies are very uh, young, youthful, and intense environments. Um, but I was I was kind of shocked by that. Um, and then I saw it a lot. I've seen it a lot on the corporate side and particularly on the agency side. Um, and you can see it in the demographics of who is working in agencies these days because, you know, there's only about 10%. I have a video coming out next Monday or the Monday after about the uh, AIGA uh, design census from 2019 and the, and the ages as they make up the population of working graphic designers. And only about 10% of graphic designers are over the age of 50. And when you get to the age of 60, it goes down to like 1% of the working graphic designers are 60 or over. So it's an incredibly ageist profession. Um, But it also means that even if those people are freelancers, they're either giving it up at that age or they're aging themselves out. So I don't really know what the answer of that is, but that was the first time that I noticed it. Um, Okay. (laughs) Will wearing cool glasses help me raise my rates? Yes, it will. Anything that you do for personal branding to make you differentiated from your competition will help you. Um, I'm a firm believer in that. Um, uh, You... Yukayan, Yukayan, um, Yuakan, Yuakan. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name. I'm really scared of being a public person. Person, I don't like being famous. Is there a way to make everything without my face? Um, yeah, be a writer. Be a writer. Um, there are there are tons of people who do videos without showing their face. They just do they they show the screen and they do a voiceover. Um, be a podcaster. There, you can, you don't have to be a public, you can be a, you know, you can put content out there or put your work out there, whatever that is, to drive value for other people and to put value back into the world without showing your face. There's like a million ways to do it. Um, So anyway, um, and chances are, no, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say chances are you're not going to be famous because, you know, who really wants to be famous? Being famous is not fun, um, but you know, developing a community and being and doing good work and helping people is fun. Um, John Rousseau says, "What's your go-to treat after doing an event like this?" Oh man, I I don't know if I've ever shared about this. I have a serious sweet tooth. Um, I love 
like ice cream, candy, stuff like that. Recently, I've been really into, there's this salted caramel that Ghirardelli makes. It's a salted caramel, um, uh, uh, you know, liquid melted stuff, putting it on, um, on ice cream on this particular kind of salted caramel ice cream with pecans in it. And it's just freaking amazing. Um, yeah, I have a sweet tooth. So that's my kind of go-to after this. Um, all right. Peter says I'm in the 1% finally. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, Jan says audio podcast. Yeah, there's so many different ways of, of getting out there uh, without showing your face. Um, and John says, I'm afraid of being famous too. Yeah, we're all laughing at that one. Um, okay, guys, this has been awesome. I, I, thank you so much for being here. Um, I've had a, such a great time. Um, and so I will probably go live next Friday. I've been making a run of it. Um, so I don't know what the subject's going to be on, but I will make sure to shoot out uh, a couple emails a couple days in advance to let you guys know. And uh, so you can put on your calendars and put an alert on. Um, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Hit that subscription button. Hit that notifications bell so you can get alerted when I go live, get a little email or whatever that is. And um, and a thank you so much to the wonderful, lovely, and talented uh, Joselle Tech, who's been moderating this evening. She is my rock star and um, my uh, marketing assistant. And she's also a moderator of the uh, Facebook, um, Brand Design Masters Facebook group. And uh, Kirsty, it's awesome to see you here. Um, it was great talking to you today. I'm looking forward to, um, to working together in the in the brand design masters guild that's gonna be great uh trench Giselle, anita peter daniel um you go to brandon i'm scrolling uh colette Luis, cecilia thank you and thanks for being here thanks for all your questions this is totally fun i hope i have inspired or added some value to your day or evening and um, if not come back next week and i'll do my best to do it again and so with that, you guys have a great evening and um, I'll catch you on the flip side. Okay, bye.